Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Ron, for those kind words. Um, it's an honor to be here to see Kaleo. Um, I call him Kay. I don't know if anybody else calls him that, but I call him Kay. But to see him being dedicated to the Lord today, um, that's a blessing. Um, in about seven, eight more months, my daughter Zora will be up here being dedicated as well. So thank God for that. Yeah. So listen, I'm not going to be before you long. Uh, God gave me something, and we're going to go home. I'm just going to give you a little bit of word, and we're going to go home, okay? So we're going to pray real quick, and we're going to get into it. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity, Lord God, to come before your people, Lord God, and give a word. Speak to me and speak through me, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, for those that know me, I'm usually behind the scenes. Um, I'm behind the camera. Um, I've been going to Designers Way now for about seven years. And in those seven years, I've been behind the scenes. Uh, when I first started, I asked PR, can I sing? And he said, you know what? No, I have something for you. I have something for you. I want you to be behind the camera. And for those that have been here the, all this time, we've grown. We've grown. We've grown. We started when we were on C CW for a while. Um, that was short-lived. But he asked me to uh, kind of spearhead that, to be um, the leader in that ministry. And so I'm just used to being behind the scenes. So this is a little bit different for me. Um, but I always said, if I ever spoke, if I ever spoke, I, I just started thinking back to some of the preachers that I've been under. I've been under the small church, like the in the, in the, in the basement church. Um, but I've also been a part of some mega churches. Um, one of the churches that I really kind of remember a lot is uh, I used to go to Church of God by Faith. Church of God by Faith. Um, uh, those that know Church of God by Faith, sometimes they're a little traditional, right? Um, one thing I can remember, though, uh, when we used to go to, like, the Holy Convocation, or we used to have our quarterly uh, meetings, uh, superintendent used to get up, and I already knew when he was going to get up, I said, if I ever spoke, I'm going to be like him. And I'm going to start my message out with giving honor to God who's the head of my life, <laughs> the usher board, the motherboard. I said I was going to start my message out that way. So I just wanted to get that out, get that out the way. <laughs> never forget it, never forget it. Um, but today's message is going to be simple. It's going to be real simple. Um, I'm not going to go into no Greek and Hebrew, so not today. You can come back next Sunday and get that. But today I'm going to make something real simple. Um, I'm a lot like my pastor in the sense that I like old school rap, old school rap. So Wu-Tang used to have this song that had a little clip, and it would say, I'm going to play it for me. Can it be that it was all so simple? Can it be that it was all so simple? So I'm going to try to give a message today that just simplifies something that's in God's word. Real simple, real simple. And forgive me, I'm going to kind of go back and forth in my notes a little bit too. Um, one of the things that helped me in my relationship with God are relationships. Relationships. Um, I've been married to this beautiful young lady right here for going on five years now. And in that, God has dealt with me about some things. God has cultivated some things in me. And he's strengthening me day by day by day. My commitment to my wife. He's strengthened me in that. He's strengthening me in that. And in my time with my wife, I built character. Character. For those that have been married for some time, you know that <laughs> marriage is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> marriage is not for the faint of heart. It challenges you. And in that challenging, God has built a character in me. God has built a character in me that has pushed me, that has pushed me to be a better person each and every day. And that commitment, I'm talking about my marriage, but I'm also talking about my relationship with God, right? It's pushed me. It's pushed me to, to change my character and that commitment to God to a whole nother level. I think about the marriages that are around me. Uh, my parents, they may not be watching. My stepfather, he plays for another church, um, so he may, not, he may be busy right now. But my parents have been married for 20, 
this year will be 27 years. 27 years. Now, what's, what's interesting about their marriage is that before they got married, my mother already had three grown boys, grown men by the time they got married. And my stepfather didn't have any kids. That had to be a challenge, right? And not just anybody can do that. It took character, character to accept, hey, I don't have any kids, but you know what? I'm going to submit and I'm going to be a father to these boys. And we needed it. It was right on time. We had just moved down from D.C. And we needed a fatherly figure in our lives. And he was committed to that. Right? It took character and it took commitment. It took character and commitment to do that. When I think about some of the other marriages that's in my life that I gleaned from, uh, the Boltons. Wow. 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 I want to say... 37 years or 36 years? 39 years. Wow. 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 Now, for those that don't know a little bit about the Boltons, I, I just know a little bit myself, a little bit I'm going to share. Um, Elder Bolton was in the military when they met. Am I correct? Um, and from what I understand, there would be times where he would be gone for three to six months nine months, whatever the case may be, on tour, out at sea, gone. Gone. Just got married, but gone already. Then there were kids that came along. I believe that there's a, a son and a daughter, two. He would be gone for three to six months, if not more. That took character and commitment to be able to stand and say, you know what? That's my man, <laughs> right? And look, look that's, if you know Sister Bolton, that's my man. <laughs> right? Right? And, and, and I'm pretty sure that it was a challenge. I'm pretty sure it was a challenge. But he was committed. They were committed. Right? They had character. Right? That character on the inside, they stood on that. They stood on that. Right? 39 years. I'm only 44. They've been married pretty much my whole life. <laughs> right? And that, took, that takes commitment. It takes commitment to do that. So, so that's one of the things that helps me. And let, let me also just plug in Married Couples Wednesday. Yeah. Raise your hand if you're married in here. Raise your hand if you're married in here. Listen, 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 listen. Let me tell you, let me tell you. Married Couple Wednesdays. You need it in your life. You need it in your life. Last Married Couples Wednesday... It was only about five couples. The Boltons was one, the Canoodles. Um, we were there. Um, I can't remember everybody else was there. I think Art and his wife was there. But we just sat down and we just talked. We just sat down and we just talked about what was going on in our lives. We needed that. So listen, married couples, married couples Wednesday, 7 o'clock, be there. Be there. We needed it. We all need it. Okay? So that's my plug for Married Couples Wednesday. <laughs> Back to our scheduled program. <laughs> so God began to, you know, w w as far as my relationship with God, um, he helps me through relationships. Um, the other thing he began to work with me on is my work for God. My work for God and what God wanted me to do. And I related to my work, uh, to my, related to my time at my job. I've been on my job now to be this year 11 years, 11 years working for one job. Prior to that, I was working for another job for nine years. So a total of 20 years in the banking industry. I'm not going to go into what banks I work for. No, I can't help you with your account. <laughs> I'm not going to go into that, right? But I worked for uh, the last 20 years, two of the most major banks in the world, right? right? So I, I thought about the work that I did for 11 years, right? The commitment that I had. The character that I had to put in each and every day. I did with customers all day. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Customers and their money. <laughs> customers and their money. Listen. <laughs> Listen. I get people that call me everything but my first name. Everything but my first name. But the character in me, right, the character in me, 
come, I'm going to let you say what you need to say. And I'm going to do what I can to help you. And I, and I stay committed to that. 20 years of being in banking. A lot of people look at me like, John, why are you still there? Some people cuss at you and yell at you. Committed. Committed. Because, again, I've related it to my relationship with God. It's not just about the work that I do here. Right? I'm relating it to say, okay, God, I'm doing this for you, but I'm relating my, 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 the time I'm at my job to you. To you. Committed. Character. Who's been in here on their job for more than five years? Five years. Okay, good, good. More than 10 years. Okay. Anybody in the 20 range? 15 range. Okay, okay. What do you do, Sister Bridget? Assistant principal. <laughs> Committed. <laughs> Character. Right? All right, all right. Who else? Somebody here more than 50? What do you do? Working in insurance. Their money, right? Committed, committed. I'm pretty sure there were some days as an assistant principal, her character was tested. Her commitment was tested, right? But she stood. And she is where she is because she stood. She stood. She said, God, it, it, it must be where God is calling her to be. Committed character, right? I, 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 like I said, I've been on my job for going on 11 years now. But for me, it's not about the money. It's not about the money. I could have probably have gone somewhere else and made more money, right? But it's about being committed and the character and the favor of God over my life, Amen. right? So I've been in positions where uh, uh, maybe I wasn't making the amount of money that I wanted to make. But God gave me favor yes. in positions, right? People say, oh, well, that's a lateral move. No, 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 I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about the favor of God over my life. Yes. The favor. Favor can do more for you than money can ever do for you. Yes. Favor can open up doors for you that money can't open up for you. And so I say, God, I want to make sure that I'm in your will. Because when I'm in your will, favor, yes. right? Uh, think about a scripture that first came up as I was doing my uh, studying. Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 4. If you don't have a Bible, which we all should have a Bible on our phones, but if you don't, uh, the scripture should be on the screen or below. Right? Favor of God. So when you're standing and you're committed, and you're standing and you're committed in character, you will win favor with God and man. That's not, that's not to say that you want to please man, Right? Because we're not here to please man. But at the same time, when you're standing and you're committed to what God has called you to do, and you're doing it in character, you'll have faith with God and man. Again, it's not about the money. The money will come and go. Pastor Priest, a couple, uh, couple months ago about chasing after money. I don't chase after money. But favor. Favor. You want to make sure that when you're committed and you're committed in character, that you're praying for favor. Because, again, money will come and will go. God is also, um, through, through, through relationships, through my, through my commitment at, at work, God has given me people that I can look up to. Now, think about the Bible. Everybody know all of the characters in the Bible, right? But God gave me... Uh, through, through, through some other ways to be able to understand uh, um, true character and commitment. Who's in here a sports fan? You got any sports fans? Okay, okay. NBA fans? Okay, okay. Uh, one of the greatest players who ever played the game of basketball is who? Wow. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Is he going to play? It's coming. Michael Jordan. Listen. Throughout the world. Throughout the world. I'm not just saying the United States. Throughout the world. 
when they see this man, there's a level of commitment, right? There's a level of commitment. As soon as you see him walk, oh, that's Michael Jordan. There's a level of commitment that he had. Every game he gave his all. Every game he gave his blood, sweat, and tears. Regardless of how he was feeling, regardless who, was, who he was going up against, he gave his all. Gave us all. And he's known by that. So when you see him, it's almost, that's Michael Jordan, one of the greatest. That, and I keep saying one of the greatest. I, I, I know where I'm going with this. <laughs> one of the greatest. Even the flu game. We talk about the flu game. Who, who, who's ever heard of the flu game? Michael Jordan flu game. So check this out. He didn't have the flu. Let's correct that. He had stomach poisoning. He had food poisoning. But regardless his character and commitment to the game wasn't going to stop him. His coaches, that's Michael Jordan. His teammates, that's Michael Jordan. We're going to make this happen. 38 points, and at the end of the game, he hit the game winning three. Food poisoning. He shouldn't have played that game. He should have set that game out. But he said, you know what? I'm committed. Watch this. Watch this. I'm committed to who I am and my teammates. Now, I'm not just talking about Michael Jordan now. You, you, are you listening to me? I'm not just talking about Michael Jordan. I'm talking about his commitment and his character. Right? Now, I, I said that was one of the greatest. Now, for all those that know me, y'all know who my favorite player is. You already know. You already know. Listen, mama, there go that man. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something about Kobe. Not only did Kobe bring a certain level of commitment, and, and let me just also say this for the Internet, I do not own the rights to these videos. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make that clear. <laughs> I don't own the rights to these videos. Let's go back. Kobe, that was a bad man. Listen, not only was he committed, not only did he have character, but that man gave his all to a point to where he had the Mamba mentality. So it wasn't just the way he did things, but just his mentality on how he approached. I'm, I'm talking about Kobe, but I'm talking about my relationship with God, right? 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 He had a certain level of commitment to the game, even to a point where he tore Achilles just that little, little part back there in the back. And, and, and believe it or not, it, it seemed like it's small, but you can't walk. You can't walk in that Achilles. Kobe towards Achilles, said, okay, hold on. I'm committed. We got to win this game. We got to win this game. So he hobbled out there, and he shot his two free throws. Committed. Committed. And character. Now, for those that are not basketball fans, um, some of y'all are football fans. I'm about to touch a sensitive, sensitive topic right now. Uh, Tom Brady. Is, is, it, is it too soon? Is it too soon? <laughs> is it too soon? Some of y'all still hurting? Okay. Okay. Tom Brady. I don't have a video of Tom Brady because I'm not a buck. But, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm a Tom Brady fan, right. but I'm not a Bucks fan. Because he, he played for Michigan. He played for Michigan. I'm a Michigan Wolverine fan, so I, I, I rock with Michigan. So I like Tom Brady. I don't like the Patriots. I don't like the, the Pastor Lee. <laughs> okay. I don't like the Patriots. I don't like the Bucks, but I like Tom Brady. But here's the thing about Tom Brady. Tom Brady wasn't the fastest. Tom Brady really didn't throw the ball that far. When you think about other quarterbacks that were in the league during the time he was in the league, really? There were probably quarterbacks much better than him. That's why some people will argue that Peyton Manning was better than Tom Brady. Because Peyton could throw farther. Um, 
he went net faster than him, but he may be a little bit faster than him. But see, Kobe brought a level of commitment and character to the game that his team may say, hey, if Tom Brady's on the field, we got a chance to win. We got a chance to win. I remember that play where he threw the ball. It was, it was, a, it was um, when they played the Atlanta Falcons in the Super Bowl. They were supposed to have lost that game. I still look back on that game and say, how did they win that game? But Tom Brady's commitment and character to the game won that game. That last play where um, I want to say it was Edelman that caught that pass that just barely hit his fingertips. Edelman ran a route, came back to Tom because he knew Tom, Tom can't throw the dead ball. <laughs> so he came back to Tom to get that pass because he understood Tom Brady's going to find a way to win this game. Again, I'm talking about Tom Brady, but I'm really talking about our relationship with God, right? Figuring out a way. What do all these three scenarios have in common? We talked about commitment. We talked about character. Here's a secret weapon. Y'all ready for this? Simple. Consistency. When I think about the Boltons, when I think about my parents' relationship, they were consistent. I'm pretty sure Elder wrote Sister Bolton every so often. Every chance he got to call her, he was consistent. Because he was out, right? But he was consistent about it. My parents, they were consistent. Even though they had, so, so, so just to go back to my parents. So they got married, had three grown ch children. Um, shortly after they got married, they started to foster foster uh, kids. They had over, I want to say over 20 to 25 kids in their home. Out of that 20 to 25 kids, they adopted seven. Uh, my oldest sister is now 18. The youngest is nine. So I'm not going to give their full age, but they're in their 60s with seven kids in the house from the age of 18 to nine. That takes character, commitment, and consistency. Right? And a whole lot of patience. <laughs> right. Because, listen, anybody who's been in the, the, child, the uh, foster care system, you don't know what you're going to get sometimes. You don't know the, the issues that kids are going to come with. But you have to be committed. You have to exude character. And you have to be consistent. Because if not, they'll run your house. <laughs> but my parents, no, they weren't having it. So I'm thinking about being on that job. Right. There were some days where I used to be a worker, man, I hate it here. I'm ready to go home. But my consistency preceded how I was feeling that day. So for the last 11 years, even when I was having a bad day, even when I can't stand these customers, my consistency, my consistency carried me through my consistency. My manager saw that, and they knew that they could rely on me, and through that, I gained favor. I gained favor to this day. That's a sound bite in itself, to this day, right? Favor. When I think about Kobe, when I think about Jordan, when I think about Tom Brady, yes, it was character. Yes, it was commitment, but it was consistency every day. Every game, every season, you can almost bet your clock, bet the game on it. I know he was going to come and give his all. Consistency. Consistency. So think about your relationship with God. Right? Think about your relationship with God. Think about your relationship with God. Where are you? Are you committed? Think about your character. And most importantly, your consistency. John, what does that look like every day? Everybody is different, right? But I can give you a couple of examples. Yeah, you can pray every Tuesday if you want. That's, that's one thing, right? But it's not just about when you pray. 
the frequency, but your intensity. Right? So if you're going to pray on Tuesday and that's your day, okay, pray on Tuesday. But come with an an anticipation to hear from God. Committed. Right? Character, consistency. Right? If you're going to read your Bible, you're going to read your devotions every day. Don't just read your Bible every day. Come with an expectation to hear from God every day. When I would come to work, it would be hard, but I would come with it. You know what? I'm going to help somebody today with their account. I'm going to help somebody today that's dealing with something, that's going through some financial hardship. I'm going to do whatever I can to help. It wasn't just I'm going to come to work, but I came with a fervor. I came with a, you know what? I'm going to do something to help somebody today. I had an expectation for God or expectation to help someone. So when you're thinking about, yes, I got to pray every day. When you think about, yes, I'm going to read my word every day. Come with an expectation for God and watch God meet you where you are because he's faithful. He's faithful. When I think about 1 Thessalonians, making it simple, making it simple. All throughout the scriptures, God referenced the simplicity of what he's asking us to do. First Thessalonians made it real simple for you. Now it says pray constantly, but for the sake of this message, pray consistently. And again, it's different for everybody, right? Everybody has their own prayer time. Uh, what I've been doing since the beginning of this year is every morning at 7 o'clock, sometimes a little bit earlier, sometimes a little bit later, but I'm consistent at 7, no later than about 7, 11, I might be rolling out, Okay. Because she didn't woke me up maybe four or five times in the middle of the night. I'm like, okay, I got to get it. But I'm up. And I shake it off. And I shake it off. And I get down on my knees and I say, God, today I need you. Today I need you. And I don't come with the Lord, God. God oh my. I come with the fervent, committed character. God, I need you and I'm consistent. I'm consistent with it. And it's difficult. Like I said, sometimes I wake a little bit, little bit later than, than normal. I try to get up at 7, but sometimes it's 7.05, 7.15, but I make sure that I'm committed and I'm consistent with it. When you think about your commitment and you're constantly doing something, you build that uh, 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 momentum. And when you feel that momentum, it's like that, you know, you see that, see that illustration of uh, a snowball and you keep it going. See, when I first started, it was hard, right? Okay. All right, Lord. And as time went on, it's prayer time. 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 It's time to read my word. It's time to read my word. Uh, I, I have a Bible. Uh, this is odd for me to have my notes and scriptures on here because I have uh, study Bibles that I go through. And I don't you know, claim to be a theologian or anything like that. But I look forward to it with an expectation to hear from God, to hear from God. Because I'm committed. And my character says I can't just do just enough. i got to study and read his word. And it's a challenge. Believe me, it's a challenge. Because sometimes when you, you're not, uh, uh, it, 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 like I said, when I started off, it was hard because I had to wake up. Um, while we were out on paternity leave, there would some, be some times where I didn't get up to maybe 8, 9 o'clock because we had a rough night. And so when I began to be committed to say, okay, God, at 7 o'clock, at 7 o'clock, regardless of how I feel, I'm committed. I'm committed. And I have to be consistent. I have to be consistent. Since we've got to be committed. We've got to have that character. And we have to be consistent. And it seems so simple, right? It seems so simple. Again, I'm not, no, he, no Greek, no Hebrew, no, no extra, <laughs> none of that. We're not doing that today. Just, just, just simple. Just simple. Just simple. Consistency. 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 As I was studying, God showed me um, King Asa. King Asa in Second Chronicles. Um, just to give you a little bit of backdrop on, on King Asa, um, the height of what was going on is in... in uh, Second Chronicles 16, 
But in 2 Chronicles 14, when Asa became king, he immediately started tearing down the idols of the previous kings. Immediately started tearing down uh, uh, of the temples of the previous kings. And he trusted God. He trusted God in everything he needed to do. When it came time for war, he trusted God. When it came time to whatever he needed, needed to happen in the kingdom, he trusted God. But I'll bring up uh, 2 Chronicles 16. But then, unfortunately, he changed. He stopped being consistent. He stopped being consistent. So I'm going to read this. At that time, Hananiah the seer, or in some translations it would be the prophet, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said to him, Because you relied on the king of Aram and not the Lord, the army of the king of Aram has escaped from your hand. Were not the Cushites and Libyans as mighty army, great number of chariots and horsemen? But yet, you relied on the Lord. You were consistent with the Lord. You were consistent with the Lord. Two chapters. You can go back and you can read it. Second Chronicles 14, 15. Consistent. Everything that he needed, he went to the Lord. He said, you relied on the Lord and he delivered them into your hand. But then he says, for the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are committed Committed. God is looking. He was looking for people to be committed. Looking. Looking for character. Looking for someone who was committed. Looking for someone who was consistent. He was looking. And he knew. He knew that King Asa was committed. But King Asa was no longer consistent. And so what did he say here? What's this? What's this? You have done a foolish thing. No longer being consistent, relying on man. From now on, you will be at war. From now on. From now on. Some of us go through things in our lives and we're like, okay, God, I'm tired. I need something to change. We're in our now on, now on moments, right? And we wonder why we are where we are. And we're like, God, I'm, I'm tired of going through this same thing over and over and over again. I'm in my now on. I'm, I'm tired, God. I've been dealing with whether it be uh, uh, financial issues, relationship issues, on the job. You just feel like you're in that now on. Just like, when is it going to stop, God? Consistency. Can God rely on you? Are you committed? Your character. Can God rely on you? Can God rely on you? What's that? The very essence of who we are physically is what? Consistently going. Consistently going. What would happen? What would happen if that heartbeat? What would happen if that heartbeat stopped? That consistent beating. See, I'm trying to simplify it for you. The very essence of who we are is consistency. The very essence of who we are is consistency. God is calling us to be consistent. To be committed, be committed to his character and consistency. That's it. 
That's it. God, I'm in my now on moment. And, and I just can't seem to get out of this. God, I'm tired. God is calling you to be consistent. God is calling you to be committed. Not just committed to any old thing, right? But committed to his character. Be consistent in his character. I think about when, and, 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 and forgive me, but this is just, this is just what helps me. I remember when um, in my tithing, I wasn't committed. I wasn't committed. I would tithe when I wanted to tithe. Not, not the same church, but I remember another church used to say, even if you didn't have nothing, come up and touch the basket. And, and for me, at that time, I understood, okay, well, maybe, okay, I, everybody can see me. Okay, I'm going to go up and I'm going to make sure that I touch the basket. I had money in my pocket. I had money in my account. Or, or, or for some old school, I could have wrote a check. <laughs> right? I had money in my account. I probably could have wrote a check. But I wasn't consistent. I would just go, so everybody could see me. Right? So everybody could see me. See, being committed and having character or, 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 or po a portrait of being committed and having character, that's for everybody to see. Right? And when we're talking about consistency, that's for God to see. Because I can sit here all day and be committed, come to church every Sunday, or have what we call character and do, go through the motions, right? But my consistency is what God sees. It's what God sees. We need to be consistent. We need to be consistent. We need to be consistent. And it can be a challenge. So I prayed in the beginning of this and I said, God, speak to me and through me. Because it's not just me getting up here telling you what I'm perfect in. Because I'm not. Like I said, it was a challenge for me to get up at 7 o'clock every morning and say, okay, God, I'm going to meet you here every day. We have to be consistent. That's it. So, so if I had the title of this message, it's going to be real simple, real simple, real simple. Consistency, a.k.a. faithfulness. Can it be all so simple? Bow your heads with me. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for this word, Lord God. This word challenged us. This word challenged us. This word challenged us. You're faithful to us, Lord God. You're consistent with us, Lord God. Great is your faithfulness, Lord God, each and every morning. You're faithful to us every morning. One of my favorite scriptures is in Lamentations where it says his mercy is new every morning. There were times in my life where God, I didn't know if I would see the next morning. But you were consistent with me every morning. Growing up where I grew up in D.C., in Maryland, you didn't know <laughs> if you were going to see the next morning. Though I was young, I knew that there was a chance walking in the wrong neighborhood, walking down the wrong street, that I may not see the next morning. But you were consistent, God. You were faithful even when I wasn't faithful, Lord God. You were faithful, Lord God, when we weren't faithful. You were faithful when we weren't thinking about being faithful to you, God. 
you were consistent when we weren't being consistent with you, God. And we thank you for that, Lord God. We thank you for that, Lord God. This word challenged us this morning, Lord God. Challenged us to be a better version of ourselves, Lord God. To be consistent. And for each and every person here, it's different. It may be one needs to be consistent in reading their word. One may need to be consistent in praying. One may be consistent in their time. One may, may, one may need to be consistent in their, their marriage. One may need to be consistent in their job. But I pray, Lord God, today, Lord God, for consistency. For consistency, God. For consistency, God, because you've been consistent with us. You've been consistent with us. And we thank you for it, God. And we give you all the praise. Not, 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 not for ourselves, Lord God. Not for ourselves. Nothing that we can do to deserve this. There's nothing that we can do to deserve your consistency, God. But we thank you for it, Lord God. And we give you all the praise. And we give you all the honor. In Jesus' name. Let me just share one more thing. This is just on my heart. I wasn't going to talk about it, but I will. Beginning of this year, uh, I wasn't feeling good. I wasn't feeling good. And being the tough guy that I, I can be sometimes, um, I tried to just fight through it. I tried to fight through it. But after a while, my heart rate went up. And it was just abnormal. It just, it just, it just, it just fast. And I couldn't understand it. So finally, I told my wife, babe, listen, I'm, I'm not feeling 100%. We need to figure out what this, this is. So we went to the ER, and they ran a whole bunch of tests. They said, John, your, your, your heart is fine. Everything about your heart is fine. But they said, well, it might be. Okay, well, let's, let's run that test and see. Right? So I went home. I wasn't sure, so I quarantined for a couple of days. Um, they gave me some medication to kind of help me uh, feel better. And they came back, confirmed. Yep, got it. My turn. And I passed it to my wife. That was tough. Me and my wife were just, okay, we're going we gonna to work through this. We're going to work through this. Got all the way to day eight. Sunday morning my daughter had a fever I had to trust God I had to trust God I had to trust God and I took a step back and said okay hold on where 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 I need to trust you God so me and my wife got together, and I repented for not being consistent in trusting him. I challenged myself. I said, okay, God, hold on. What, what, what do I need to do? Because I know that you're consistent. I know that you're faithful. And I had to come to a place where I said, God, I trust you. I trust you. I'm committed, and I'm consistent to this. Imme almost immediate, I ain't, almost immediate, my heart rate started to go down. My wife started to feel better. At the time, my three-month-old was still had a fever, but I said, God, I'm going to be consistent, and I'm going to trust you. I'm going to be faithful in believing that your word say it. Your word say it. And after about three or four days, her fever broke. It was, it, was, it was hard. It was hard. But I had to be consistent in trusting him. Saints. 
He's going to be consistent. He's going to be consistent. He's going to be faithful. Are you consistent? Trust Him. Trust Him.